wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. From hardness of heart and contempt of my word and the madman. Good Lord, hear us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire and flood, from plague, pestilence and famine. Good Lord, hear us. From all oppression, conspiracy and rebellion, from violence, battle and murder, and from dying suddenly and on. and temptation. Thank you. 
repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We seek to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We seek to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to strengthen such as to stand, to comfort and help the weak hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to grant to all the faithful departed eternal life and peace. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of the ever blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, we may attend to thy heavenly kingdom. We seek thee to hear us, O Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Shine forth, you that are in the upon your 
in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put, puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Why are things different in here? Don't you love Jesus? 
Don't you love Christmas? Are you like the Puritans? You know, the Puritans thought that Christmas was just an opportunity to, uh, uh, for excess and distraction. Uh, they say all sorts of things about us because of, of our weirdness. And Dolly Parton always says, it never bothered me when they called me a dumb blonde because I know I'm not dumb. And I know I'm not blonde either. <laughs> I love her. I love her very much. Uh, but we, we know we are a little bit weird. But we do know that we love Jesus and we do know that we don't hate Christmas. Uh, so what is the deal if we do love Jesus and don't hate Christmas? Well, have you ever tried to explain Advent to someone who is completely unfamiliar with it? You know, it's December the 23rd or the 24th. What do you mean you're not singing the Christmas carols in church yet? The vast majority of the country, especially in the South, looks at us like we are crazy. And I'm not talking about people who are unfamiliar with church. I'm talking about lifelong, devout Christians who just can't, simply cannot understand why in the world we're not doing what everybody else is doing. And then when we try to explain it, even we ourselves find us in the weeds every now and then, right? Even we can't explain it very well sometimes. And I think the reason for that is because the season of Advent itself can't really make up its mind. Now, we begin Advent this morning in broad daylight uh, the, the, with the tiny little light that shines off in the, in the distance. And we're going to end the season of Advent on Christmas Eve in the pitch black with all of the candles going. And that is a, a little different than how we should do it. If we talk today about sin and darkness, and on Christmas Eve we talk about the little light that shone in the darkness, and the darkness could not comprehend it, then we probably do this backwards. Maybe we ought to start this Sunday in the dark. But today is the day that we hear about the terrible, terrible trouble that we are in as Christians. And we ask for mercy, and we ask for hope, and we ask for the Savior who will lighten our darkness. And we will count down the time. You know, the Advent wreath is the original Advent calendar. We came up with it first. And we will count down the Sundays as we prepare for what we are preparing for in the season of Advent, which is, of course, Christmas, right? Except Advent can't make up its mind. It's weird. Uh, yes, this season is a little bit like Lent. Lent ends in Easter, and we spend Lent getting ready for Easter. And Advent does end in Christmas, and we spend some time getting ready for Christmas, but we gather here this morning, and we hear lessons that talk about the coming of Christ, but they don't seem to be talking about Christmas Christ. They don't seem to be talking about the little baby born in the hay box. They seem to be talking about the big, scary Jesus judge that will come in clothed in dreadful majesty on clouds descending. Now, I am a big believer in the teachings and the traditions of Holy Mother Church. A little like the scriptures, the teachings of the church uh, have been guided by the Holy Spirit over hundreds and hundreds of years to teach us how to be better Christians. Now, the church has certainly gotten things wrong here and there, but as you look back and see things corrected and weeded out over time, it's clear to me that the Holy Spirit is still speaking to us through the traditions of the church. I just take a very long view of what the traditions of the church are. So what is the Holy Spirit saying to us about Advent if we don't really even know what this season is about? Well, the most dangerous thing that a preacher can say from the pulpit is say, well, here's what I think. Right? It's very, very dangerous to talk about your own opinions uh, from the pulpit. So here's what I think. <laughs> I think that Advent is the season that reminds us of how we wait and reminds us of why it is that we are waiting. Because we are still waiting. We say it every week that we believe Christ will come again. And we wait for that. And we wait and we wait and we wait. We wait for him to fulfill his promise the promise to come back that he made to us 2,000 years ago because waiting is just what we do as the people of God. Now, Chad, you said that last year. I did. I did say it last year. Almost exactly like that last year. I'll say it pretty close to that next year, probably, too. Now, I know I've also told you this story before, although I don't think I've told it in Advent. 
Uh, back years ago, I heard an, an interview on NPR, back before NPR made me mad. Um, I, I was listening to an interview of a man who had been a minister, I think he was a Presbyterian minister, and he had been for several, several years. Uh, and he, uh, in this interview, he was talking about his journey to becoming an atheist. Uh, and now his stated reason for becoming an atheist was because he realized that the prophecies about Jesus coming again had just not happened. And so they must not be true. Christ had still not returned. And all I could think was, bless, bless his heart. Uh, he, he might have been 45 years old. And in those 45 years, he had become so impatient that he just couldn't do it anymore. Well, my goodness, we've been waiting a lot longer than 45 years. How in the world could a minister have missed it so badly as to be shaken by the impatience of having to wait just a few decades that he had been on this earth? You know, how could he have such a poor understanding of God's relationship with his people for the last five or 6,000 years or longer uh, to, to give up on waiting just because he had been waiting 40 years. You know, good brief waiting is what we do in the church. We always have. We remain faithful to our God who has a timeline all of his own. So what does all of that have to do with us waiting to sing the songs, waiting for the sun to go down at 438 this year? I already looked it up. 438 this year on Christmas Eve so that we can sing, Oh, come on, ye faithful. The rest of the world rushes right into it, but we're not doing that yet. We're waiting. And yes, a lot of churches have already begun putting up the trees. Now, we have a tree in the parish hall, but that's the living room, right? We don't, we don't have it in the church. Formal dining is where we are now. Uh, they've already put up the trees. They're singing the carols. They're planning the big musical productions, and that's okay. But we, like the Catholics and the Lutherans and millions of Orthodox all over the world, we're saying, hang on, we're a little weird, and we're going to wait because, not because there's anything wrong with celebrating Christmas early, but because this is the time that we set aside to remind ourselves that Christians wait, and that what we're waiting on takes practice. And so we practice it right now. But, you know, let's reverse our old mantra, the mantra that we have at Resurrection for Advent that we have said together for seven or eight years now, and we say it every single year during Advent. God came to Abraham and told him that he would be the father of a great nation, and he waited. God promised his children that they would have a land of their own, and they waited. The prophets told the Jews that the Messiah would come, and they waited. The archangel Gabriel told Mary that she would bear a son, and she waited, and Christ told us that he would come again, and we wait. We agree to that when we are confirmed, and our parents agree to that for us and for themselves when we're baptized. That is what this season is all about. It reminds us that we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. It reminds us what we're waiting on, and it even reminds us how to wait, because Christians clearly wait differently from other people. Now, I love Christmas. I love to be with you all on Christmas, and I love what Christmas means uh, for having a family and having a church family. I love the religious parts of Christmas. I love the secular parts of Christmas. For me, all of that is worth waiting for. And, but waiting is patience, and being a Christian takes patience. And that's what we're reminding ourselves of today. Coming to church and waiting, well, that's weird. That is weird, coming to church and saying, nope, we're not going to do it. It's weird. Even though we are in this world, we are different. We're weird. We know that. But we are still waiting, as weird as we are, and we are still faithful to the one who made us the promise. And he has never yet failed us in these promises. About 2,000 years ago, God kept his promise of sending that Messiah. Nobody was expecting what he looked like. It was a complete surprise. No one was expecting a baby born in the haymox. But that baby brought the salvation of our souls. And so this Advent, let's stick together as we wait. In all of our weirdness, with our weird brothers and our weird sisters, let's stick together and let's wait for the promises of Almighty God for one more year. And next year, we'll pledge to wait another year. And the year after that, we'll pledge to wait another year. And we will wait 
year after year after year until clothed in glorious majesty, he comes for us once again. Amen. So we will come to church Sunday morning and we will have Advent 4. And then we will come back to church and have Christmas that night. Now, we will only have an 8 o'clock service on Christmas, um, no, on Christmas Eve. On the 24th, we will only have an 8 o'clock service. And then I promise Miss Jackie that the next time this happened, that we would come to church at 8 o'clock, we would ch- cancel the 1030, and we would all jump in and help the, the, the altar guild and the flower guild convert the church right from Advent to Christmas because it's a quick change that year. So, 8 o'clock, bring your, you know, you bring your, your strong back with you or somebody with a strong back so we can move Christmas trees and, and put out 
while all four wise men, we have four wise men at resurrection, I don't know why we do, uh, move the Christmas trees, put the poinsettias in, and then get ready to come back for, uh, for the Christmas Eve service. Carols will begin around 5. The service will begin sharply at 5.30. Uh, next Sunday, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, is Parents' Day out from noon until 4.30. If you've got any errands that you need to run and need some place for your kid to come and have a really good time while you do that, Miss Elizabeth is ready to go with that. You can drop off the kiddos. Like I said, uh, just stay right after church until 4.30, and you can go do whatever, whatever errands you need to do. Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, we're walking through the verses and all of the different names for Jesus that are listed in the hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Uh, we'll do that uh, every Sunday during Sunday school and every Wednesday uh, until Christmas. Evening prayer is now at 4.30 because it gets dark so early, except on Wednesdays because of Wednesday night programming. We're still at 5.30. That was a lot of dates and a lot of times, wasn't it? I think they're all listed in your e bulletin. Are there any birthdays today? Chef Michael. Still here. Still here. You got one more, right? They just keep piling up on us, don't they, buddy? <laughs> Almighty God, watch over your servant Michael as his days increase and bless him where he stands. Uh, lift him up when he is discouraged or sorrowful, and on that great last day, bring him to that heavenly kingdom of all your saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. We love you. Any anniversaries? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding in your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever.